We have more boy in Spain. Good to see you all this evening. It's another lovely night, isn't it? A little sweet bit cooler tonight than what it was the last few days. But um, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this evening. Hope you've all had a good couple of days since the last time we've seen you on, on Sunday evening. Uh, it's good to see you all again this evening. And, everybody watching at home as well and um, before we get into the, the devotional um this evening we'll just open up on a wee word of prayer bless the lord oh well, thank you lord that we're here in your house this evening lord lord another opportunity for us to gather together lord to have a time of fellowship lord another opportunity for us to gather together to come before you with our prayers lord lord knowing that no matter what we ask for tonight lord yes. you already know about each and every Amen. situation yes and we thank you for that lord lord another opportunity for us to gather around your word lord yes. and lord we just thank you lord for everyone that's managed to make it out this evening lord but for those who have had to stay at home lord lord we just pray as we always do lord every time that we meet lord that you draw alongside them lord Lord, we know that you are alongside them because you never leave them and you never forsake them. Mm. But Lord, we just pray that you just place your healing hand upon them. Lord, that you bring them back to full health and strength. And Lord, that you would surround them with that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that as we turn to your word, Lord, or we pray, Lord, that it would be an encouragement to somebody this evening, Lord. And Lord, that you would bless speaker and listener alike. We ask it all in your name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and if you have your Bible with you this evening, um, we're just going to read a single verse, and it's in Ephesians chapter 3. Don't forget there's no services this week apart from Mums and Tots tomorrow morning, and then we'll be back here again on Sunday. So it'll be great to see you on Sunday morning, Sunday evening again. Um, so Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to read a single verse, verse 20. Now to him he is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. I'll just read that again. Now to him he is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. And that the Lord will add. A blessing to the reading of his word tonight. Um, you know, that, that verse is a very familiar verse, one that each of us here will have read many, many times before. And, you know, I'm a New King James man, and that translation, that was a translation that I've just read. But other translations put it this way, that he can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And this verse is part of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And what was true for the Ephesians is still true for each of us today. Right. Now it tells us in the Bible that the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Mm. You know, every single thing that the Lord did that we read about in our Bibles, he can still do today. Amen. And you know, this verse tells us that there's absolutely nothing that the Lord can't do. And again, it was true for the Ephesians and it's true for ourselves. You know, the Lord can do all things. I know sometimes that's something that just rolls off our tongue. You know, each of us here would say that we all believe that, that there, there's nothing too difficult for him. And yet at times we seem to limit him. When we come before him and we come we come with him come to him with our prayer requests and we know without doubt that every single word of our prayers is being heard by him we are thankful and we are reassured that the lord is always there with a listening ear no matter whenever we turn to him there he is listening we can be thankful and reassured that before we speak a single word that he knows exactly 
what we're going to say and what we're going to ask for. He knows every single one of our needs. How wonderful is it that we have a God who knows everything about us. That he would love us so unconditionally that he would know what we are in need of before we even ask him. Yes. Bless you, Lord. You know, it tells us in Psalm 139, verse 1 to 4. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You know, church, he hears us and he knows us. And yet at times we can find ourselves holding back from praying big prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, we at times don't ask at all or we find that we almost water our prayers down. But we'll have to remember that we pray to the Lord and that He is that there's nothing too difficult for Him. And again, He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. You know, we can pray big prayers because we serve a big God. You know, sometimes we sit and we think about things, we imagine things, we imagine what it would be like if revival came to Belfast. We wonder what it would be like if the Lord moved in an almighty way. We imagine what it would be like to have our entire family sitting around our table, each and every one of them saved and Amen. living for the Lord. Yes. Glory. Yes. And we imagine these things and we think of these things. But again, as it says there in our main reading, he can do more than we can even imagine. No, I don't know about any of you, but I have a great imagination at times. Um, I don't know whether you have noticed, but I am a wee bit weird. And uh, in fact, I remember whenever I was younger, um, before the days of internet, I had asked uh, mum and dad for a Nottingham Forest top one Christmas. And my mum, <laughs> my mum couldn't find one anywhere. And I remember she said to me, David, why do you like things that other people don't like? <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of stayed with me all these years. But I, I, had a, I have a great imagination, a great imagination in school. I remember in primary school, quite late on in primary school, I have to admit, um, you know, all my friends had moved on to the A team and Dukes of Hazard, and I was still on Thomas the Tank Engine and Bob the Moon. And you know, I remember say, suggesting to a, a few people that we should pretend to be trains from Thomas the Tank Engine. And we had a hopscotch grid that was painted on the playground. And if you remember, all the engines in Thomas had a number on the side of them. And um, whatever engine you were pretending to be, you used to stand in the number on the hopscotch. And that was our engine, Shane. Do you know? Uh, and uh, we used to go around like this. Like this. And uh, if it was a cold, frosty morning, you used to go... <laughs> and we thought, and look, I'm wearing blue today, so it's all going oh, well. So it is. You know, we were walking around the playground like Egypt's doing this. But we can all imagine stupid and silly things at times. But there are many things that we can imagine that we can very much see become a reality through the Lord. I don't mean becoming Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> but we can imagine revival in Belfast. We can imagine the Lord moving in an almighty way. And we can imagine household salvation. And these are big prayers that we can indeed see happen because the Lord can do immeasurably more than all we ask Amen. or imagine. Amen. You know, church, the Lord will never let us down. Mm -hmm. Other people will let us down and we will let them down at times as well. Everyday things that we use can let us down. Also, many times we've had an occasion where the car hasn't started or the washing machine stops spinning or we turn on the tap and the water doesn't come out. You know, we rely on people, we rely on things. And yet it turns out that some people and things aren't very reliable at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we know tonight that the God we serve is fully and completely reliable. Amen. You know, he's never once let us down and he never will let us down. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us. And he never makes any mistakes. 
we can fully rely on him. Though we often pray in our own private prayer time and also together here in our prayer meetings that the Lord would move in an almighty way in this area and that we would see this area one for Christ. Yeah. And we only need to look around the streets of this area and we can see <coughs> with our own eyes just how far it seems to be away from the yeah. Lord. You know, we've went around the doors with leaflets advertising the church on many occasions and we'll be doing that again soon. And I remember the pastor going to the door one time and just before he put the leaflet through the letterbox, the man opened the door and pastor handed them the leaflet and the guy said, asked what it was about and pastor said it was a leaflet from Bally Selenilum. And before Pastor had even got to the gate to go back out, he was throwing it in the wheelie bin, like right in front of our very eyes. And Pastor said, don't do that, give it back to me and we'll give it to somebody else. But you know, the majority of people around these streets don't want to know about God. They have no interest whatsoever in the Lord or in coming to a service in this church. And I'm sure many people, even though they live in this area, probably don't even know that this church is here. And we can be discouraged at this. But church, you know, there's been countless people all over the world who didn't want anything to do with the Lord. Plenty of people who had no interest or intentions of ever going to a church service. And yet today their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life oh, right. because they gave their lives to Jesus. You know, at times whenever we look around the area and we come across people like that man who threw the leaflet in the bin in front of us, we can at times begin to doubt that we will see these people saved. That we will see this area one for the Lord. Again, we imagine these things, but at times it seems too beyond our imagination that we think it'll never happen. And we can find that we don't pray about it. We don't pray that big prayer. But again, the Lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Nothing is too difficult for him, and we can indeed see this area one for the Lord. We pray for our unsaved loved ones, and we can feel at times that they are getting further away from the Lord the more we pray for them. We wonder if household salvation will ever be something that we have within our own homes. But again, we can pray that big prayer and we can see our families sitting alongside us in church. We can pray those big prayers of healing for ourselves and for others, knowing that we serve the great physician. Yeah. Knowing that he can do more than we ask or think. And that we can receive that healing that we have asked for, for ourselves and for others. Nothing is impossible for him. You know, there are many examples in God's word where the Lord did exceedingly abundantly above all that people could ask or think. One of those examples is the feeding of the 5,000. A large crowd following Jesus around because they were in complete awe of his teachings and his healing. Many of them came to hear what he had to say. Others came to receive healing. And they had been following him around for quite some time and the disciples tell Jesus to send the crowd away because the people hadn't had anything to eat and the Lord tells the disciples to give them something but all they have is five loaves and two fish. Jesus makes everyone sit down and he takes the loaves and the fish and he begins to hand out the food. Every single person that was there that day had been fed and they'd been fed until they were satisfied. And there was even enough food left over that they were able to fill 12 baskets that had not been eaten. You see, the Lord Jesus didn't just give, but he gave in abundance. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that day, I'm sure, were extremely hungry. Many of them needing food, but not wanting to leave the Lord Jesus in order to get some. They probably wondered where they were going to get anything to eat. But the Lord Jesus that day did exceedingly abundantly, more than any of them could ask or think. Mm. It says in Isaiah 40 verse 28, Have you not known? 
Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. You know, the Lord is a limitless God. Amen. We serve a God tonight that has no limits. And yet at times, why do we limit him? The Lord is able to do all things. And we have so much to praise him for. Yes, we have so much to thank him mm-hmm. for. Yes. Countless things to praise and thank him for. And we can praise him and thank him tonight that he is indeed limitless. We can praise and thank him that there's nothing outside of his capabilities. What an awesome God we serve. You know, no matter what we bring before him, there is no prayer too big for the Lord. There's no prayer that he can't answer. But just to bring this short word to a close before we come around to a time of prayer. You know, church, we know tonight that there's nothing too difficult for the Lord. We know that he can do all things and there's absolutely nothing that he cannot do. We know that he is all powerful and we know that he is in full and complete control. And yet at times we withhold our big prayers. We think that they are too big of an ask. We think the Lord will never answer that or we say to ourselves, sure we've been praying for things for years and we still haven't seen them answered. But again, church, we can continue to pray those big prayers to the one who is able. You know, many times we sit and imagine what it would be like to see this area on fire for the Lord. We sit and imagine the church full of so many people that we need to buy extra seats. We imagine our loved ones who seem to be so far away from the Lord one day accepting him as their saviour and then praising him and living for him. We imagine one day finally being free from that sickness or that pain that has afflicted us for so long. But the Lord is beyond limits. And he has the power to make these things not just something that we hope for, not just something that we imagine, Mm -hmm. but he can make these things a reality. It says in Jeremiah 32 verse 17, Ah, Lord God, Behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. No, church, let's not limit the Lord. Let's not withhold our big prayers from him. We can come before him with boldness and confidence, knowing that there's nothing that he can't do. Again, he can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We are so thankful to the Lord and we praise his name knowing that there's nothing too difficult for him. We're just going to come to a time of prayer. And again, as I've already said, there's nothing we'll say tonight that the Lord doesn't already know. He knows what, what we're going to say. He knows the words in our tongue before we've even spoken. Bless you, Lord. You know, just, that's just a wonderful thought that he knows. And sometimes that can be quite a frightening thought that he knows everything about us. But it's so reassuring tonight that he does know our yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows. Mm. And everything that we ask of him tonight, not only does he know about, but we know that he hears our prayers and we can be thankful tonight that he can answer those prayers. And we can pray those big prayers knowing that there's nothing too difficult for him. So we'll just read that uh, verse out again from Ephesians. Now to him he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Bless the Lord. So just say goodbye to everyone that's watching at home and uh, just hand over to the pastor to go through the prayer requests and we'll have a time of prayer together. Bless you. Amen.